What's up guys, welcome back to DCA. So in yesterday's video, we looked at whether we thought it was likely that we would head below 20K based on the market momentum that we've been seeing. So we've been in a basically nothing but a slide ever since April. And one of the things we talked about in that video was how this metric, the one we're looking at right here, the supply distribution of Bitcoin can really give you a look at what is happening in the market and where you're very likely to experience support and resistance levels at. Because when you're looking at this metric, you are looking specifically at where the actual holders of Bitcoin are. And you know, one of the comments that I got yesterday was kind of the idea that a metric like this doesn't really have utility in a upward moving market. And so what I wanted to do is just bring this up real quick. So this is actually the last time I made a video on this metric back in January. We were just at the very start of the rally. So we had moved up to around 23K. And I was making the video to show the viewers that, you know, where we're sitting at right here. And if you'll recall yesterday, we were talking about these low volume areas. When you get towards a low volume area, it's very likely that you are going to experience a rapid rally once you break above any remaining resistance levels. And where you're typically going to encounter resistance is wherever at a much higher level, your next set of holders exist. And so we were making this video and I just included the quote here. And I said, I think you're going to see the price explode through all the way up to around 30K. Just go back and look at the way we've been using this metric ever since January of 2022. And you know, this video is from January, 2023. And we said that, you know, once we break above that level, it's pretty much clear skies. Now we did hit some resistance up at around 25K, 24, 25K. Once we cleared that, what happened? We shot straight up to 30K just like we were seeing here in this video. And guys, this is back in January. In January, we were talking about, you know, the second you clear that level, you're going to 30K. So this is a powerful metric, guys. It doesn't matter if it's an up market or a down market. This metric is absolutely, uh, you know, it's just spot on and we've been using it, you know, I'm still surprised by how little recognition this metric gets. I know there are outside influences uh, on the market that, you know, outside of just wherever the Bitcoin holders are at. But, you know, by and large, uh, these levels exert quite a large amount of influence on the price action of Bitcoin. OK, so I just wanted to quickly touch on this and just show you that, yes, this metric works not only in an upside market, but also in a downside market. So as soon as we hit resistance at this level, we kind of got stuck there and had trouble getting above that 31K zone. So right where we were kind of talking about right in there. Yesterday, we just kind of looked at the general uh, layout of the market, but we're going to look at who has been doing the selling over this last 30 day period because we've had these negative events in the market play out like the SEC coming out and sort of going after Binance, going after Coinbase, uh, you know, going after Kraken prior to that and others, labeling a lot of these altcoin securities. And I wanna show you why the long-term holders of Bitcoin, the, you know, quote unquote, smart money of Bitcoin, they are not panicking. No, you know, there's no panic occurring right now from the longer term holders. You're not seeing an exodus from Bitcoin. In fact, the argument can even be made that the SEC going after all of these altcoins, you know, going after DeFi, that could ultimately be a bullish thing for Bitcoin. And, you know, I'm not going to sit here and get into the tribalism because I don't really care about it. You know, I think it's kind of ridiculous. In fact, you know, we have enough enemies in the crypto market that we don't need to be enemies amongst ourselves. And I think that's a critical thing that people definitely lose sight of. You aren't benefiting anyone by, you know, uh, going after coin XYZ, that's a competitor to your coin ABC, right? We have enough people coming after us. Just, you know, kind of take that to heart and just remember the fact that there's enough uh, adversity that we face as it is out there. We don't need more internally. So with that said, guys, let's hop into it. All right, so just to quickly look at this again, we said that, you know, we're sitting somewhere here at around 26K and, you know, what we talked about was the fact that there's a bit of resistance above us now because some of these short term holders have started accruing Bitcoin at these higher levels. And what we tend to see is that these guys are going to be the sell factor in the market. They are going to be the um, kind of sell pressure in the market driving the price down. 
Whereas the longer term holders, they may also act as sell pressure. That's, you know, no one's going to argue with that. Um, but by and large, they are going to act as areas of support. Okay. They're going to act as areas of support where your shorter term holders are typically going to be resistance. Now, obviously, if you go on a huge run, you're not going to have any short term holders kind of at your level. So at that point, yes, long term holders will act as resistance. It's guys, it's not a binary thing. It's not one or the other. It's a bit of both. But we're just talking about generalities here. In general, short term holders, especially when you're seeing the price uh, starting to fall and then you may come back up to these levels these are going to be your resistance levels these guys so let's look at the numbers though i can tell you that but then i get comments people kind of not believing that that's true or coming up with ideas about you know what may be going on but we don't need to guess what's going on we can look and see the raw data of what is happening and so let's do that so what we're looking at here is the net position change of long-term holders over the last 30 days. So first of all, let's define what's gonna be a long-term holder or what's gonna be a short-term holder, okay? So these are your long-term holders. Anyone who has owned Bitcoin prior to this date. So remember, we're looking over the last 30 days, so we're not going to include anyone who has been considered a short-term holder from this point onwards. These are going to be considered our short-term holders. What's the reason that we're doing this? And the reason is, as we said, we wanna know, are these guys who have been holding Bitcoin forever, are they selling right now? Are they panicking? Or is all of the selling coming from much newer holders? Is it coming from people that have kind of just started holding Bitcoin? So we're gonna categorize that as either short-term holders or we're gonna see if there's some sort of stratification amongst the actual long-term holders, which you're going to find that there is. All long-term holders are not created equal. And so we immediately see where the majority of the selling has come from, from the long-term holders. And where is that exactly? Well, it's these two zones here. So you'll notice that at this $23,500 level, so people that bought right at this local top here, they've been holding and then within these last 30 days, these guys have sold. And why is that? These were, you know, people that bought right at a top, right at a local top. And what happened? The second that these guys became profitable, the second that we got above that 25K level, they said, you know, I watched my investment drop all the way from 25K all the way down to around 16K, but I kept holding and then, you know, I held on to it until I came into a profit. I'm now up 25%, even though I was down 40%. So those guys sold in mass. That's what we saw. Even though we said that oftentimes long term holders are going to be your support, remember they can also be sell pressure. Okay. So these guys here, they were brand new long-term holders, right? They had just become long-term holders, so they fell into that category. But we know that naturally, someone who's been holding for eight years is probably much less likely to sell than someone who's been holding for six months in one day. And remember, six months is the cutoff period. So in fact, these guys did become sell pressure, all right? And we saw in a net position change at this 23.5 level, this 23,000, 500 up to 24K, we saw a net position change of around 70,000 Bitcoin. And then we saw another big sell pressure coming from people that bought down here at 20K, all right? And these are all guys that bought right in here. So you have these two groups, people that bought above 20K and then people that bought below 20K while we were sitting down here after the initial kind of the events that played out with Terra Luna, right? Because we went all the way down to 17K and then had another dip with the FTX event. You'll notice that there's also a lot of sell pressure coming from up here. Now, individually, none of these levels is very important, but we've seen this kind of all throughout this bear market that these guys up here have been selling. Now, for the most part, a lot of your sellers are gonna be gone here, right? Anyone who's owned at 65K, 60K, 50K, anyone who's gonna sell probably has at this point. So, you know, a lot of these guys up at these higher levels, they are out of the market. So there is there is sell pressure from up here, but it's very little at this point. Now, we will look in later videos how there are some of these levels, like in the 40Ks, there are some of these levels that do have a lot of coins still. A lot of people who bought in this range right in here, you know, kind of from this 40K level 
up to maybe 48K or so, there are a lot of coins that have been acquired there that are still sitting there. And so we probably will butt into some resistance as we go through the 30s. So the 30s, you know, in the 30K levels, there's not much. So I kind of still believe that once we get above that 30K level, you're going to see the price go on a nice run. This is the, when we look below us here, most of the sell pressure, there are some of these old coins at, at around the price of 8,000. You did see that around 15,000 coins were sold there. Then, you know, once you get down here, you're always seeing some selling from, from like the, the $500 level up to $10,000. You're always going to see some selling because these guys are in massive profit. They've been sitting in profit for years and they're always going to be mobilizing small amounts of coins. So anytime that we go on a run like this, you're probably going to see these coins pick up a bit because when we go on runs, you'll see these coins start to move a little. And when we start to decline, you see that these coins are kind of held back. Now, overall, how many coins were sold from long-term holders at each level? And what we see is there were about over 30 days, 267,321 coins were sold and moved. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the short-term holders. And now remember, since we're looking at only people that have held for less than six months, we only need to look at a range from around 17K up to around 31K. We don't need to look at the entire range of Bitcoin anymore. And what you see is the fact that where has the selling come from? Well, if we just quickly go back to this here, a large number of the short-term holders that have sold are coming from this price range right here that we've been talking about. Remember, we've made multiple videos about this and talked about this in lots of videos now. There was a huge amount of buying at the 17K level. You know, it was approaching 1.1 million coins or so that were purchased at that level. What we would have expected to see is those 17 or those 1.2 million coins to have distributed by this point, but we haven't seen that. So we've only seen around 220,000 coins from this level mobilized. And that's a, you know, so it sounds like a lot, but consider the fact that when we were all the way down here, when we were at 23K, for instance, you also had a very large number of coins at these levels. When we were at 22.5K, a large number of coins, but those have mostly evaporated now. They've been sold from that level. And that's because of the fact, like we've said, short-term holders come in, they buy, and then they're out of the market and they do this very quickly, okay? So there's a very high turnover rate, but we have not seen a similar turnover rate at the 17K level. And that's important. That's important to take note of. Now, we've also seen some sell pressure down here. Some people that hadn't sold yet, they've kind of been distributing now as we're coming back down towards their cost basis because those guys want to lock in a profit. Now, you'll notice that up here, this is where a large percentage of the turnover is coming from. And this is what I've been talking about. As we continue forward, if the market starts to continue downwards, you're gonna see this amount of coins that's being distributed start to really move to the downside because of the fact that there's so many coins sitting up here. Notice that, you know, if we just look at the short-term holders, that there are millions of coins from anywhere from 26K, so right, 26.5, 26K, all the way up to around 30.5K. But when you look at how many have sold so far, it's a relatively small amount, okay? So compared to the total amount, we're talking about, uh, what, 60,000 coins, another 40,000. So a couple hundred thousand coins have been distributed. But if we continue down, we'll very likely see these numbers rapidly start to increase, okay? And that's just part of the normal cycle. And that's what we always see. The short-term holders are typically doing the selling. Now, over the last 30 days then, who has been doing the selling? Is it this narrative that long-term holders are kind of fleeing the market? When we look at this here, the selling has been 833,490 coins from short-term holders. And if we just go back, 267,000 coins from long-term holders. So there's been almost three times as much selling going on from the short-term holders in comparison to the long-term holders. And remember, we're talking about net change in position size here. So th this means that compared to 30 days prior, this position size has decreased by uh, approximately 60,000 coins. And this has decreased by around 40,000 coins, all right? This has decreased by around 75,000 coins. This one has decreased by around 220,000 coins. So 
these are all selling, net selling. So we're looking at all the people that bought, all the people that sold that are considered short-term holders, and what has been the overall position change at each price level. And so that's, you know, kind of the beauty of on-chain analytics. We can see everything exactly where it's happening. And we can get this very detailed and vivid picture of the market in order to understand how this market is operating, who is doing the selling, because if it's these guys, that's something we need to be worried about. If you're seeing an exodus from coins down here, you know, if I started to see a mass number of coins being sold at 5K, at, you know, 7K, at 12K, these older coins, that's concerning. When I'm looking at all of the selling, almost all of the selling is coming from 20K up to 30K from these long-term holders, you know, quote unquote long-term holders, they're really... Uh, much closer to short-term holders because they literally just had become long-term holders. So all of the selling is coming from those guys and then these guys. That's not concerning at all, guys. That's people being driven out of the market, uh, being scared of the SEC. Whereas longer-term holders are looking at it saying, hey, well, you know, maybe this is bad for the crypto market overall. This could potentially be bad for the crypto market. But it seems like, from my perspective, this could be a really good thing for me as a Bitcoin holder. Because the SEC is saying, hey, Bitcoin's not a security. They're basically making taking the stance that Bitcoin, yeah, there's nothing we can do about that. That one's fine. That's a commodity. And so overall, you know, if you're a Bitcoin holder, and that's what we're talking about here is Bitcoin, um, you know, that's a positive sign. So these long-term holders are not getting scared out of the market right now because of anything that's happening and you know if you are invested in bitcoin i'm not going to tell you that we're not going to go down at all from here but i am going to tell you that i'm not concerned going forward in this market you've seen if you've been watching my channel for any amount of time you know prior to 2022 i was the most bearish channel on the face of planet earth all through 2022 then once I started seeing data telling me right in January, you can go look in January, right at the start of the year, I started making videos saying that, hey, it looks like a lot of things have fundamentally shifted in this market. And now I'm starting to gain a positive outlook. So, you know, I'm sitting here trying to bring you objective analysis. When things look bearish, I'm going to tell you that. And I had no qualms about doing that the entire year of 2022, even at the start of the year when it wasn't popular. Now that things have kind of turned over, the market is showing me positive signs. Our metrics are showing us positive signs. You know, I'm now, I, I have a new song to sing. So we're going to always analyze this market and I'm going to try and deliver to you objective and hopefully accurate information. And so what I'm seeing right now is, Yes, there's some concerning things, namely the fact that we are in this uh, kind of this extended downtrend right now. But hey, those happen. Those happen in a bear market. Go back to 2019. We went into a bear market, uh, you know, almost for almost another year, right? We had a very turbulent market for quite some time. But a lot of the metrics in the market, a lot of the underlying, the actual underlying data within the market was flashing bullish. And that's the great thing about the crypto market. You can dive into the psychology of investors with the use of on-chain analytics. You know, there's a lot of on-chain analytics that aren't very helpful, I think. But some of them, when you're using the very fundamental and very principle on-chain analytics, I think they're hugely telling about investor psychology. This narrative that it's the guys who have been holding forever who are selling, that's essentially, you know, we can verifiably look at the data and understand that that is not true. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Until next time, as usual, see you.